All right, y'all, welcome to the show. Uh, today, we're going to dive into a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to lead here in just a second with Tulsi Gabbard all but begging to be Trump's vice president on Trump's son's podcast. Whole lot of ick in that conversation. Then we'll get to uh, Sean Fain laying the smack down in a congressional hearing. Uh, my guess is he absolutely shocked the senators who were there with how aggressive he was and leaning into the class politics. That's incredibly based. Then we have, I got to be honest with you guys, one of the most shocking CNN segments I've ever seen because they're going to talk about Bernie's new bill, which is a 32-hour work week, so it's a four-day work week. And CNN basically comes out swinging in favor of it. I mean, not something I would ever expect, but I'll give a little twist at the end. I'll tell you why I think they're doing that. Um, then we'll get to the new reporting behind the scenes about what's actually going on with Biden and his close staffers. Apparently, he's both angry and anxious, and he's been yelling and screaming and cursing about the state of the race. So even though they're putting on a, a cool front when it comes to, you know, how they're presenting to the world, uh, they are panicking. There's no doubt about it that they are panicking. And then we'll also get to uh, Texas implementing this new super conservative law to basically crack down on Pornhub. Uh, there's a number of states that have done this, but the the backlash to that, there's some new evidence of a backlash to this anti-porn crusade brought about by Republicans. You're not going to want to miss that. So everybody do me a big favor. Please subscribe to the channel. It helps me out massively. It doesn't cost anything at all. Uh, we're trying to get to 10 million subs and we got quite a while to go, but you build it one at a time. So hook a brother up with a sub. Thank you guys for those of you who have subbed. I love you to death. All right, now let's go ahead and jump into it. So Tulsi Gabbard, um, of course, ran for the Democratic nomination. Shit, how long ago was that now? Was that I think it was 2020, right? It wasn't 2016. It was 2020. Um, and she sort of positioned herself as, you know, I'm like a younger female version of Bernie. Um, perhaps the issue that she leaned into the most on the campaign trail was that she uh, she's anti-war. So Bernie was anti-war also, but he was more heavy on economic stuff and domestic stuff, class politics. Tulsi was a little more the opposite, leaning into anti-war stuff. Um, that's how she positioned herself. And look, not going to sugarcoat it. She didn't do well in the election. She didn't, I don't even know what she ended up at, 1%, 2%, if that, had to drop out pretty quickly. Um, and, you know, you could argue, hey, Bernie had that lane. So somebody else jumping in using the Bernie lane, it just didn't add up. But since then, she's been engaged in a slow motion pivot where, you know, before it was I'm positioned to the left of many of the Democrats, I'm like Bernie. And then over time, it sort of became Democrat derangement syndrome uh, where I, I only attack Democrats, whereas in the past you used to attack Democrats and Republicans and the party structure of both parties. And then now she's come full circle. And now, you know, she, uh, she launched a podcast a while ago. And if you listen to it, the thing she was concerned about, it was very like enlightened, centristy type stuff. It was no longer left wing arguments. Now she's come full circle. She goes on Trump Jr.'s podcast and she all but begs to be Donald Trump's VP. Now, the reason she's doing this is because there was some indication in some polls, I think at CPAC, for example, was one of them, where she did surprisingly well. She wasn't in the top three, I don't think, in terms of uh, who people want to be Trump's VP, but she was up there enough. She got enough of a percentage, and there's been enough articles hinting at her being on that short list where she feels like, hey, I might actually have a shot at being Donald Trump's vice president for 2024. So now that brings us to this. Let's watch and then we'll break it down. Vice president, something I've also seen a bunch here and, and actually for the last few weeks. How are you responding to that call? I'd be I'd be honored. Uh, I'd be honored to serve my country in that way. I'd be honored to actually be in a position to help President Trump execute his policies, bringing bringing the experience that I have had of being on the front lines of many of these battles and actually understanding what we're up against. And so whether you're talking about securing the border, reducing inflation, improving our economy, uh, stopping these Democrats or, 
or and and establishment Republicans stopping these warmongers from continuing to push us closer and closer to war, not just in one country, but in multiple regions across the world. These are things if I had the opportunity and privilege of being able to serve and support President Trump in actually executing these executing these policies, I'd be honored to do so. It's a total 180 from what she was. You go back. Don't take my word for it. I don't want you to take my word for it. You go back and watch her campaign launch video where she gave a speech. I think she was in Hawaii, her home state. She gives a speech. The issues she hits, the themes she drives home, it sounded like Bernie Sanders giving a speech. Everything sounded like Bernie. It was, a, you know, a, a fire breather from the left attacking the establishment, sticking to the issues. Now she's desperate, nearly begging to be Trump's vice president. I'd be honored to be Trump's vice president. You'd be honored. She endorsed Biden in 2020. The moment I knew, here was the moment I knew, oh, this is over that she's going to do the full Dave Rubin. The moment I knew was when it was in the midst of the debate around Build Back Better, when they were crafting Build Back Better. I believe they had just released it. Bernie, of course, was probably the loudest voice in the room in crafting Build Back Better. And they were trying to get it passed. And at the time, I don't know if it was right then or just before it, but Tulsi started going on Fox News, like, all the time. She's like the favorite resident Democrat who will go on Fox to only shit on Democrats. And they love that role. They bring on a black person to shit on black people. They bring on a woman to shit on women. You guys know the drill. This is a tale as old as time. So she would go on all the time. And right then I was like, mm, red flaggington. But then we got, I remember the day she goes out there. We covered it on the channel. And she attacks Build Back Better. Not because it didn't go far enough. But because in her mind, it went too far. It's bad for the debt. It's bad for the deficit. It's big government spending. Literal, flat-out, right-wing economic arguments. It's the type of stuff where if she was around when the New Deal was rolled out, she'd be like, this goes too far. This is socialism. That we need to not do so much spending. Flat-out, austerity, libertarian, Ayn Rand-brained political position. That's when I knew, oh, it's over. It's over. She's doing the full Dave Rubin. And now, shit, this may have eclipsed Dave Rubin. He did the whole, I'm the last liberal left, bro. I'm the liberal who's going to keep it real and tell you that conservatives are actually right about everything, bro. And then now he's almost taking the mask off a little bit and he's just like, I am a conservative. That's what I am. Tulsi, I don't know what the fuck she would call herself, but when you're begging to be Trump's vice president... I don't know what you want me to say. All right, now let's get to the part of this that annoyed me the most. First of all, the rank careerism, and we'll come back to that in just a minute, right? She's look desperately looking for a lane. How do I stay relevant? How do I stay relevant? She felt like every bridge was burned on the Democratic side when Bernie didn't win and she couldn't get a position in that administration and be a big left-wing figure when it was Biden that ended up winning. All the bridges were burnt on the left-wing side. You know, the Hillary Clinton types and the Joe Biden types, even though she endorsed Joe Biden, they don't, not that big of fans of her right? The media is not that big a fan of her. So she felt like, shit, I got no more opportunities over here. She did the full pivot. But she brings up, well, I would like to help him be anti-war. Go after all these warmongers. Tulsi, Trump increased drone strikes by over 400% when he was president. He kept us in Iraq. He kept us in Afghanistan, even though he said he wouldn't. He tried to assassinate, or he did assassinate, General Soleimani, a top Iranian commander who was on the field fighting ISIS. That was illegal, by the way, under U.S. law and international law, and it nearly sparked a much broader war in the region. He tried to coup Venezuela. You remember the whole thing? What's his name? Um, was it Juan Guaido? Where they were just pretending? Like, yeah, this guy's actually the president of Venezuela. We're declaring him the president. It's like, he's not. So I don't know what the fuck you think you're doing. They got caught trying to do a coup. He ripped up the Iran agreement, which got us closer to war. By the way, an agreement that they were following. It was one of the best things Obama did. He ripped it up. He pulled out of the Paris Climate Agreement. He now says he wants war with Mexico. He wants to designate the drug cartels as terrorists and then open up the door for us to go in there and start doing airstrikes 
on our sovereign ally without their approval. He armed Saudi Arabia to do a genocide against Yemenis. And then when Bernie Sanders and Mike Lee tried to block that in the Senate, he vetoed it, swatted it aside and said, I'm pro-genocide. He did the Abraham Accords, which helped lead to, led to October 7th. It's a giant middle finger to Palestinians. He moved the embassy to Jerusalem, which again, giant middle finger to Palestinians. That helped lead to October 7th. The idea that this man is anti-war is fucking factually wrong. And just to refresh everybody's memory, remember, she endorsed Joe Biden, like I said, in 2020. She did. Another crucial piece of evidence that she... She's just posturing. It's just a grift. Like, i got to try to find a way to be relevant. Remember? Do you guys remember when Biden pulled out of Afghanistan? And according to the media, oh my God, the sky is falling. You know, um, this is the worst thing that's ever happened ever. Not the war itself. Not that the, we were there for over 20 years. That's not what they were mad about. They are mad about, oh my God, you pulled out. You pulled out, and now it's ugly. Well, of course it's going to be ugly. The fucking government is completely fake. It's held together like paper mache. It's, it's never going to be pretty when you pull out of that center. But he pulled out. And Biden, to his credit, told the media to suck his nuts when they were trying to say the sky is falling and you got to go back in. They portrayed it as the worst thing in the world. And literally, you could count on one hand the number of people who were actually openly out there defending Biden's move to pull out. The entire media was implying we should get back in. Um, there was all sorts of uh, anger and desperation, and sadness, and the implication of everything was, why'd you pull out? We should get back in. Or at least if you're going to pull out, pull out in a more clean way. And there is no clean way. The Afghan government is fake. It's fake. The Taliban is going to take back over. That's the way it's going to happen, no matter what. No matter how you pull out, it was going to happen. And Tulsi Gabbard, who was one of the leading voices of Let's Pull Out of Afghanistan, she didn't defend him at all. She didn't say a goddamn word. Say, actually, he's right. Actually, you guys are hyping up how bad the pullout is, what you really should have done is covered the Afghanistan report, which came out like a year before, which showed how every single step of the way, our own generals, our own commanders like, oh, what, the, what the fuck are we doing here? This is crazy. Highlighted all the war profiteering, all the waste and the fraud and the abuse. It's a giant boondoggle. They didn't cover that report at all. But then when he pulled out, oh my God, this guy's falling. It's the worst thing in the world. How dare you pull out of Afghanistan? And she did not come out and defend pulling out of Afghanistan. That's when I was like, okay. It was over. We, I see what she's doing now. And now you have literally all... I mean, it's come full circle, right? There's no more denying it. You want to be Trump's VP? You want to be Trump's VP? Well then, okay, I'll ask the question. What does she actually believe in? I'll ask you guys. Look, I'm one of the kinder in this field where I try my best to always avoid the supercharged accusations. Like, I don't like... People say grifter way too much. In this instance, I'm kind of comfortable saying it. Because it is the full Dave Rubin. We've seen this before. It's the whole post-left thing. Like, oh yeah, you know, I was on the left, but then I got my feelings hurt from some things, and now I'm just going to bash the left all the time, and oh, did you look at that? These Republicans are patting me on the head. They're kind of nice. Oh, I guess I'll move a little further right, and now I've, you know, I've gone full circle, and I'm just a conservative Republican. Okay. All right. But own it. That's the, Just own it, though, right? Just own it. Don't give me this, oh, no, you don't really understand what she's saying, bro, what she believes, bro. That's my question. What does she believe? Do you know? Does she know what she believes? I don't think she does. I don't think she does. I think it's all, mm. Where's the wind right now? What wave can I ride to relevance? Because it is impossible. Look, she's a grown-ass woman. She's a grown-ass woman. You're telling me she went from um, uh, the younger female version of Bernie Sanders. That's my ideology, and that's what I'll argue for in public relentlessly. She went from that to, I want Mike Pence's old spot. And there's been no change? No. That is, that you could not be more opposite. And this was my main critique of Dave, Ru Dave Rubin, too, right? It was, you're a grown-ass man. Look, if you're a grown-ass person, am I going to hold it against you if you change your mind? on two, three policy issues or topics. Shit, maybe even a little more than that, four. That's, that's called maturing. That's called growth. 
when you look at things and it's, you know, so maybe a little more nuanced the older you get. You you try to steel man the opposing perspective and you might grow and change your mind on a couple things here and there. That's just called growth. That's called evolution. Everybody does that. But when you change your mind on like 98% of the things you said you believed in, that's not that's not organic. See, because that's more like a religious conversion, right? It's like when somebody goes, I was a Baptist and now I converted to Islam. What? <laughs> what? So you change your mind on everything and you're a grown ass person and you change your mind on everything in like a very short time frame. It's like that doesn't really happen. That's not a thing. Unless you're just a fundamentalist, you shut your brain off, you go from one thing to the other thing, and it's not really about logic or reason or trying to figure out the truth, right? In this instance, sorry, it smells like a grift because it is a fucking grift. So, you know, if there's 58 issues and you change your mind on 55 of them, yeah, I'm going to look at you a little a little sideways. I'm going to be like, huh, well, that's weird because usually by the time you're an adult, like I said, most things you probably are set on and then you evolve every now and then on three, maybe four things, right? But, oh, I changed my mind on absolutely everything. Did you? <laughs> Wasn't that mighty fucking convenient given the career trajectory you're doing and where you're trying to fit in? So, anyway... I, I got no sympathy for that, man. I got none. Because, uh, and that's my flaw too, is I take people at face value, right? I'm almost embarrassed that I had Tulsi as my number two behind Bernie. When you look back now and what she's become, I'm fucking embarrassed about that. And that's my flaw, is I take people at face value and assume what they're saying they believe is what they actually believe. And I don't want to get into ulterior motives, what's really in their head, what are they trying to do here? Are they angling? Are they positioning? Are they, try, are they trying to find a, a, a path to relevance? That's my fault. That's my problem, is I take people at face value too much. Every now and then, you do have to dig a little deeper. You do have to get to the motivations. You have to get to what's going on in their mind. You do have to be a little more skeptical of even what people say their whole thing is, right? And Tulsi's the best example of that. I was duped. I was duped hard. Turns out, I don't think she ever believed it all along. I don't think any of it was real. Because you just don't have this big... Of a trend. You endorsed Biden in 2020. 2020! Four years ago. Now you're like, I'd love to be Trump's VP. Please pick me. By the way, he's almost certainly not going to pick her. My guess is it, it's going to be either Christy Noem or um, Elise Stefanik. I think Christy Noem is the most likely. But having said that, um, it actually wouldn't be a bad pick for Trump because he struggles with moderates. He struggles with people who are not already in the his little cult, right? And just the fact that you can say, you know, minority woman who was a Democrat seven seconds ago, that I think might actually, because it's not like anybody who's part of the MAGA cult is going to leave because Tulsi's now the running mate. That's not going to happen. But do you pick off some people who don't pay close attention and they, and they oh yeah, maybe she's more moderate. Yeah, you might, you, that might work. So it's actually not on paper a horrible pick, but I also just don't think it's going to happen. But man, you guys tell me, what do you make of Tulsi's weird, colossal transition? Hey y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.